Thank you very much for this uh, kind introduction and, and thank you also for inviting me. Uh, it really is a great pleasure to be speaking uh, at uh, ICAB. Uh, it's also an honor to, I've looked at the list of uh, other speakers and it's uh, an honor to be joining them as well. Um, I, I have been looking at the relationship between technology and accounting for about 30 years and my sense is that digitalization is the biggest transformation in the history of business. And if we think of accounting, in a sense, as a language of business, then it's obviously going to be the biggest transformation that is confronting the accounting profession. So this is the focus of my talk. I'd like to basically highlight some of the changes that are coming our way as accountants, as finance professionals. Uh, and this is based in, on, on a number of sort of uh, conversations with accountants, as well as research, as well as surveys, as well as qualitative information that is stemming from industry, from the Accountancy Institute and from elsewhere. So uh, I'll, I'll share my screen with uh, some PowerPoints. So what I would like to do then is really focus on digitalization and automation and the, its impact on the finance function. Uh, I wrote a book recently, which uh, uh, was in the making for about three years, talking to accountants and organizations that service the accounting profession, as well as managers and executives who use accounting professionals services. Um, I, I found one, one realization that came out of my interviews and my discussions with individuals in accountancy is that there is a small number of accountants who fully grasp and understand the impact of digitalization and uh, making preparations for it. But then there's a much, much wider number of accountants who I think need to understand and want to know what exactly is going to be the impact of this. And my sense is that there is not enough preparation in that direction. So I want to highlight some of the things that perhaps we should be thinking about. There are three things that have come out loud and clear from, from uh, my research. The first one is that as accountants, we've been used to looking at structured information. So in other words, financial activities take place. We capture that data. We introduce it into our accounting systems to produce financial statements. And then different parties, decision makers and others, basically rely on that information to uh, make, make decisions and so on. Um, I, I think it's very clear now that with, with digitalization, there's a much, much, much bigger set of data that accountants have not been used to unraveling for decision-making purposes. And this basically is a gem that lays hidden to those who don't understand the impact of digitalization. And I want to sort of focus on that a little bit. Uh, my sense is that unstructured data has a huge potential for accountants to tap into. It probably represents in very many organizations 80 or 90 percent of the information. Uh, unfortunately, accountants focus on just economic transactions based on structured data, whereas unstructured data, in a sense, provides a vision of what could happen in the future in terms of financial transactions. So I'll spend a few minutes talking about that shortly. The second finding is that we, we see more and more decisions being taken by machines in organizations. Later on uh, in, in these sessions, we'll talk about RPAs and perhaps we'll talk about AI and machine learning. And we'll see that RPAs themselves are the subject of change through artificial intelligence. The third thing, which is also as crucial, is that as accountants, we used to have an accounting information system that reflects changes in the products or services of the organization. Today, the two are becoming intertwined, they're becoming joined, and this means that the product embeds the accounting information system, which itself has quite important implications. So uh, to turn to the, the first, first element, uh, we are used to looking at structured data. And what happens is that this structured data is reliant on economic transactions. The accountants 
converts this into accounting data, and then digestible financial information, income statements, budgets, balance sheets, and so on. The decision maker relies on that information. What has not taken place to any great degree is this horde of unstructured data, which is the um, uh, antecedent to economic transactions. So if I said to you, you can read today's newspaper, you would say, well, that's great. That is today and yesterday's news. If I said you can read tomorrow's newspaper today, I think you would jump on it. And this is exactly what unstructured data represents. So a huge data set that accountants have to confront in order to maintain their relevance. The second point that I mentioned is uh, the, the extent to which machines are making decisions. So as accountants, we are used to looking at data, which we, we format into financial insights for decision makers to make decisions. The actions create more data. The data is captured by accountants, produced in a readable format for humans who make further decisions and so on. So we often refer to this as the planning and control framework. I think increasingly what is happening is that we have data that is analyzed by machines. The machines themselves take action independently of humans. And of course, those actions produce more data. And you find that there is a second feedback loop that is very, very, very rapidly emerging. And the important thing to understand is that machines don't need any specific format to make decisions. Humans cannot look at raw data and make decisions. It has to go through an accounting re-representation domain before decision can be made. The machine does not need to understand accountancy. The machine can go from data to action. In fact, it even bypasses the step of decision-making. You go straight from data to action. That take place, takes place increasingly rapidly. More and more data is generated, which then gives rise to the opportunity for machine learning. As that loop unravels faster and faster, we'll see, as, as was suggested by Kurshid, uh, we'll reach a point of singularity where machines' ability to make good decisions supersede those of humans. Uh, so these are quite important trends in terms of machines starting to make decisions, creating more data on which they can learn even more how to make better decisions. The third point that I mentioned is that we have information systems that are becoming embedded into services and products. And the important thing is that those digital technologies also talk to one another. And that talking to one another also unravels and triggers a new chain of learning. And so machines talking combined with artificial intelligence and machine learning will and is making an impact on decision making. And this is a point that I'll come back to uh, quite shortly in terms of the implications for accounting and finance professionals. Now, traditionally, we've been used as accountants to look for cost savings based on what we understand about analog processes. Commerce, organizations, industry shifting into a digital era. And as accountants and financial professionals, we need to move away from an understanding of the analog world into an understanding of what digitization represents. And I think what we will see is that data gets created through action. That data enables learning, which enables more action to be taken, which produces more data and so on. This feedback loop is getting faster and faster, stronger and stronger within those organizations that have made forays into digitalization. Once this happens, it, it, it is like a snowball that becomes bigger and bigger and bigger. And it'll be very, very difficult for organizations that don't enter the digital domain to catch up with that. So this is really learning on steroid because of the production of digital data, which means that accountants also have to have a dose of steroids. 
I'll very briefly outline, uh, because uh, there's very little time for me to, to unravel sort of everything in terms of impact on accounting. But uh, from my observations, performance evaluation, which is a key task of the finance function, is changing very, very rapidly. We are seeing newer generations, the Z generation, the millennials, having very different precepts as to what they should be judged on, what is good, what is good performance, and they are basing certain actions and decisions on digital data, which is inimical to the control systems established by the previous generation. So that gap needs to be shortened and bridged and aligned. What I also find is that organizations that invest in digitalization think that you only rely on data. And as you become more data driven, you should become more quantitative. You should rely more on metrics, on calculative indicators of performance. I think this could not be further from the truth. As we digitalize, as we invest into digital technologies that produce more data, our value added is actually becoming more qualitatively oriented. What are the insights that are unraveled through an understanding of digitalization? And this is crucial for accountants to understand. What's also important is that uh, it takes more than technology and accounting to drive organizations, a lot more than that. And this is what accountants have focused on in the past. I think accountants will increasingly have to have a greater understanding of issues such as demographic changes, uh, sustainability issues, issues of data protection, information access, and of course, understanding at least some technical aspects of digitalization. So it's inevitable that the accountant skill set will have to grow much more than it has uh, sort of focused on traditionally. I think what is also really quite important to understand is that not only is accounting changing, but management itself is changing. A lot of the management fundamentals are deeply invested into traditional conceptions of industrial workings. As we transition into a more digital economy, management decision and management fundamentals are changing. And when we marry the two, changed management and changed accounting potential, that integration is the work of financial people to integrate effectively in order to render their services as legitimate and as valuable as they have been in the past. The uh, final point that I want to briefly focus on, uh, which is, I think, on every every finance person's mind, is uh, how will jobs change? What is the impact of digitalization and automation for finance professionals? And there are a number of studies that have been undertaken that look at this question. I think what is uh, probably very clear is that the level of education has in the past translated into the level of financial professionalism, the finance elements of a job in the delivery of specific services. And those are the jobs that are really at stake. Those are the jobs that are going to be much more quickly automated. We're going to see a transition taking place, as was suggested, we're not far from that. I think, you know, the suggestion that is 10 years away is probably conservative. It is faster than that. It's taking place extremely rapidly. I think also that in organizations that do not change quickly, there will be global players who will offer a better service, much cheaper, which is less reliant on technical professional labor. So we have to act quite quickly. I think the jobs that are less at stake in terms of automation are the ones that rely on a high degree of education. And as I mentioned, that piggyback on a greater understanding of wider issues that impact the accounting and the finance person's tasks. So a greater understanding, more intelligence around broader issues is going to, in a sense, protect and enhance the work of finance professionals. 
Uh, there are a huge number of, I think, opportunities for skill sets and a huge number of risks. Uh, you know, those are in the literature and they've been highlighted in finance journals. And it is a good idea to look at those. What is very clear is that there is a greater predisposition on the part of individuals to access data that is digitized. Almost all data is digitized today. That is changing the basis of the human condition. And I wanted to, as a final uh, uh, part of this presentation, to look at the relationship between happiness and digitization or digital competitiveness. A number of studies have been undertaken, and you will see that countries which focus on digitalization seem, however you define it, and there are many definitions of happiness, however you define it, there seems to be a correlation between digital competitiveness and level of happiness across nations. Correlation does not mean causation, of course, but there is a sense in which life becomes easier, perhaps because standards of living increase when digitalization and automation is accepted. So I think it rests on us as a core responsibility to advance society, to advance the region, to advance Pakistan and other countries in which you operate towards a greater sense of understanding the role of digitization and automation in our work and in the growth of organization. So with that, I'd like to thank you for listening. Thank you.